Mr. Chair, I'm ready. Very good. Uh, let's call the uh, board meeting, regular meeting uh, session. And we can start with a roll call. And Trustee Martin. Here. Trustee Holmes. Here. Trustee Reed. Present. Trustee Washington. Present. All right. Seems like we've we got a quorum. Uh, tonight we're going to go in a little different order. Uh, we're going to go into our uh, work session in this first uh, half of the meeting, and we're going to maybe go into close later on. In the meeting. So I want to start by welcoming all of our guests, those who are in attendance online. Um, Dr. Beatty, did you want to start the work session? Or are we? Yep. Good. We want to start with saying happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. She about to put Steve Harvey out of business. Did you say I got skills? Is that what you said? No. <laughs> All right, Stevie Wonder would be proud. Oh, uh, Trustee Holmes, we missed his birthday. It was in July, and because um, we didn't have a meeting, and then uh, Trustee Washington's was just last week. Yes. So, uh, on behalf of the board, she received a lovely bouquet of flowers. I did. It was gorgeous. And uh, Trustee Osborne is just thrilled to death with his birthday gift. Would you like to share? I mean, it's a, it's a, we decided to keep a keep business local. It's a garment fit bit. So we can support a local business and uh, an extra, extra large t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Trustee Reed, are you able to hear me okay? I just, we're all in masks. I want to make sure that doing a sound check, make sure you can hear me okay. Check mic one, check mic two. I hear you real good, DJ. <laughs> right. Yes, I hear you well. Thank you. All right. Uh, the board uh, calendar, our next board meeting is September 23rd. Our location is to be determined. It'll determine where we are in our uh, protocols and so forth. We also have the uh, ACCT Leadership Congress, and uh, we submitted a proposal, and it has been accepted. Uh, thanks to a couple of people uh, around in this room that helped to prepare it, Ms. Garcia and uh, Dr. Chawana. It is leading through an educational tsunami. So Trustee Washington and I will be representing the college to talk about how we survived through preparing and pivoting for COVID through also a technology disruption at the same time. Uh, so they... Uh, accepted that proposal, and then we'll have our board meeting on the 21st. We are hopeful to be in the Administrative Center then. Next up, we've got Jessica Ramirez that is going to provide us with an update from the foundation. Well, I have some great news. Do you want me to share it, Dr. Beatty? Yes. The one that's right. hot off the presses. Oh, I included it. I updated that's the right. numbers. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, well, not up here yet, but they will be. Um, this 10,744 just jumped to 11,074. How about that? 11 million. Yes, yes, sorry. 11 million. <laughs> 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 about this is right a three hundred thousand dollar grant from the debris foundation and if you're following us from month to month you know it's been on the list mm -hmm. so it's so nice that dr baby and dr swanson was able to solidify this grant it's hot off the presses this week so that's why we made that big jump and we're at 55 percent of the goal just only within a year so we're making <laughs> Great announcement. I'd like for you to all consider a new board member. 
Her name is Catherine Bolt. She's with Honeywell and has extensive uh, time there at Honeywell, over 20 years. Um, Dr. Beatty and I, along with Matt Johnson, had a, chance, had a chance to meet with her. And she's excited to learn more about MCC and be a part of MCC Foundation. And so it is on our uh, recognition tonight and consideration for our board. And I wanted to uh, thank um, Jessica for her leadership. She has a opportunity at another institution. And so she has submitted her resignation, who oh. is, uh, but we're so excited for her and we are sure that you will rise to the occasion. So thank you so much for all of you. Everyone here. I've had a chance to work with all of you over the last several years, and so so nice to see where the foundation is at and where it will be going. Thank you. You're welcome. Jessica's last day will be on the 14th, so this is her last board meeting. We wanted to make sure we acknowledged her today. We've got some informational items, and first up is Ms. Gotchis and Dr. Meyer to talk about the uh, gear funds. These are the well, they'll probably no, I don't. It, these are the governor's, uh, these state dollars uh, grants, uh, oh, governor's emergency education relief fund. And uh, they're going to tell you how we're going to spend it because you'll start seeing these items come forward. Sure. So welcome to the board. I'm Dr. Beatty. We are um, going to familiarize you with the term year, governor emergency educational fund. So when you when you hear that um, term coming up for some purchases, that is the grant that we received. And tonight we're just gonna run through quickly some of the items that were in that proposal. Um, you can see that there are some high dollar items and of course those will be coming to the board and we will also have some lower level purchases. But the whole design of this proposal was for a public safety institute. And it's almost to the tune of $900,000. We're very excited about it. And we'll go to the next one. And I'm just going to show you visually some of the things that we put in the proposal. Ideally, in the proposal, we wanted to increase more training experiences for our students at the PSI. We wanted to be able to move the program around so we could showcase it to potential students at fairs and different types of things. We wanted modernized equipment, um, promotion of public safety in general to the community, and we wanted to remove access barriers. So when we wrote the proposal, those were the things we Kept in mind, you can see that we've got a vehicle coming that helps us transport the oxygen tanks for the fire trainers. This thing in the top right is a stimulator for driving a fire truck, and you can put software in so they can drive an EMS vehicle and a police car, and it's high quality, real life experience. Uh, safety equipment for the fire, and then a lot of these sim simulated um, mannequins. We have pe pediatrics adults, and so on. I would just add, this is for fire, police, emergency medical technician. So the equipment will be used in all three programs and really bring us up to state of the art in public safety realm. So thank you and uh, take any questions. Questions? It's exciting the governor's up. We've already received these, been awarded these funds. Yep. Uh, so we'll be moving forward with that. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Chancellor. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, we often see in the source of funds column, we'll see grant. Mm -hmm. And um, is it possible sometimes to identify the grant? I mean, I kind of like to see the year as it goes through. Would that be too much of a problem? Say that again. I mean, so uh, her uh, identifying the grant, which is the source of dollars for purchasing that we're making, it will say grant. It'll just say grant normally, and we usually keep it general because in a lot of cases, we may be pulling from more than one grant. So where it's possible, and we know for sure, but it, it's, uh, I'm, I, I feel his eyeballs on me. What he would say, talking about uh, Don here, <laughs> Dr. Michelle, what he would say is sometimes we don't know exactly. So if we say bring something to the board and it, it says, gear grant and then we end up spending a hundred dollars more out of general funds we would have to come back technically to the board so that's why we keep it general mr vice president can i withdraw my question 
<laughs> I'm sorry to give you the complicated answer, but I, I could no feel it would have been sufficient. <laughs> I would never want to tell you no without an explanation. Well, and, sharing, sharing information. Yeah. And and quite frankly, I've asked the question myself, so that's why it was a fresh answer uh, for me. But it's, it's yeah, okay. All right, we are moving into some computer replacements and you'll see these items coming up on the agenda in future meetings. So we wanted to uh, give you a heads up and provide you with an update. And Dr. Chuan. Thank you, Chancellor Betty, for the opportunity. Thank you, Chancellor Betty, members of the Board of Trustees. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to provide this um, informational item to you. Uh, I have to remove my mask for the sake of the people that are uh, on. Uh, Next month, to you requesting board approval for the purchase of 1,700 computer laptops. Out of the 700 computer laptops, 1,350 of those, 1,350 of those will be towards replacing of aging computer hardware within our network. And the, uh, and the remaining 350 will be going towards our student loaner program that allows us to be able to provide technology for the students who may not have the way to go to practice technology. So they get to borrow those laptops from us and then they get to return them at the end of uh, the semester. The total cost for the 1700 laptops would be $1,956,000. One, $1, 1,956,000, sorry, apologize for that. <laughs> And um, we will be requesting an additional $43,000 for a total of $2.2 million. And that's because of the unprecedented times that we're living in, uh, by shifting costs and shifting needs. So we want to be in a position to be able to respond to those needs when they arise. Uh, the next uh, slide, you know, provides a breakdown of those laptops. As I said, 350 of those will be going towards our student donor program. Student facing laptops, you know, uh, 140 of them, these will be going to the cards. These are cards that are available on campus whenever students need, whenever a student needs a laptop and they're on campus, you know, they can be able to borrow one and return that laptop on the same day. Then we have uh, students facing desktops in the last, you know, uh, 650 of those. Classroom instructor PCs, those are uh, PCs that are found within the teacher workstations within our classroom, uh, 320 of them. Employee facing desk desktops and laptops, both 120, 120, 120 uh, desktops and 120 laptops. So uh, the total will be about 1,700 laptops for a combined uh, cost of 1.956. And as I said, we'll be asking for $243,000 extra for a total of 2.2 million, which will be next. Any questions for Dr. Chuana? Uh, Dr. Chuana, when's the last time we made a purchase like this? Uh, this is an annual cost. So every year, uh, you know, our computer replacement program is uh, uh, a dogs are based approach whereby we replace them based on the life expectancy of the devices. So typically every five years, we get to replace aging technology within our network. Um, and then does this help our efforts for the distance learning and seeing that maybe Correct. there's some hot spots, we're trying to introduce some hot uh, wireless? Correct. You know, it's that broader that strategy. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions? Thank you, Dr. Chuan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll go over items on the agenda and the finance report. Dr. Michelle will give us some highlights. Thank you, Chancellor Beatty, members of the board. This evening, I take this opportunity to update everyone on our financials. So as you look at this particular chart, again, I call your attention to the last column, the bottom figure, the 6.4%. Just so everyone knows that the uh, uh, calculated target would be 8.3%, so we're well uh, below that particular target. Uh, 
uh, but again, this is a snapshot in July, and the semester will soon be upon us. And so there is some crisis spending that will be happening in the next month or so. This again, this cycle shows the uh, how we're proceeding into the, the expected cycle for receiving our revenue and our expenses. You should be able to glean from this is that we, again, this is a snapshot in time for July. Uh, this helps you <coughs> see that uh, both our revenue and our expenses fluctuations are well within the expected range. We also, uh, every month, have been giving you a capital projects update, but before I transition, I would uh, make one comment about the financials. We showed you July, June obviously was our closeout year. We didn't have our meeting in July. And once those books are audited for FY21, we'll come back and share it with you the audited end of year statement for uh, FY21. Uh, we like to keep you abreast of the uh, capital projects that we have on tap. And I think Dr. Chriselle and Mr. Jeff Ullman are for any questions about the financials before I move on to this topic. Okay, Dr. Uh, Chriselle and Mr. Ullman will provide us with a capital projects update. As you came into the campus, you've seen the building, the engineering technology uh, building is finished. I think 99.9%. So would you? What you'll see is 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 the engineering tech building is at 99%. Uh, what we're doing is is the final closeout, the punch list, to go through all the little nuances that we need to take care of, and then we'll get our official occupancy. And uh, so that project is coming along very well. Uh, the other project, APSI, uh, I'll have a few pictures you'll see is, is but if you happen to drive down truth. You'll start to see the, the big wall that used to be all brick and now opened up and there's windows and a canopy that was all uh, additional ass that we asked previously to add that nice canopy to it. Uh, so you're going to start to see a real nice projection of this particular facility. And later on, we'll talk a little bit more about the APSI. And then the Blue River campus, uh, those of you who were able to join us, that's the, normally a signing, but we signed up an artifact that went into the construction. That project is really progressing along very well, and uh, everything's on track and everything is on budget. So what I wanted to share with the board and, and the community is, is that you know we've we've successfully moved the engineering tech facility and all the <coughs> materials from the MCC Business and Technology, the BT campus, and that cost us about twenty one thousand dollars. We're now preparing to move all the remaining stuff sitting in the uh, MCC business and technology facility that will be located to the other two facilities as we get ready to close down the MCC BT campus. Uh, so I wanted to share with you a little bit of what those numbers are. We're still working on a projection for uh, the print shop, uh, workforce economic development, library facilities, et cetera, the support services, uh, but we have a good feel for the projection for the East the Blue River East Campus, the linemen, and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on the Advanced Technology Skills Institute uh, because I think you would start to raise your eyebrow about half a million dollars to move, it, to move this equipment. So let's, let's jump a little bit deeper into the Advanced Technology, uh, which will start, but this doesn't do it justice, but this is that face that I was talking about. All glass is going in and the canopy. So this is going to be the new main entrance. Uh, used, the entrance to this facility used to be on Truce, and now it's on the north side of the building into the parking lot. So it will be a greater access and better access uh, for our students, faculty, and community to get into the facility right, out of, right off the parking lot. And you'll see that it's progressing along. A lot of stud work and Finished work is going into that particular project. So let's talk a little bit about the move. Uh, I shared this slide just for informational purposes, but uh, the move 
equipment, $540,000 or $540,000 move is only going to be eight miles. And it's 17 or 16 minutes by car. But I want you to understand this is we're crossing several main thoroughfares, et cetera, and it's going to, we're moving heavy equipment. So, okay, you go to the next one. This is, so let's talk about what, what has to happen more specifically for the ATSI. And I'll, I've got a few more pictures that I'll show you so you get a better feel for what's going on. But the first thing that we need to talk about is before we even move the equipment, we're talking about some pretty massive equipment, is that we need to disconnect it. I mean, this, this equipment is not just plug into the wall, like a refrigerator. Uh, well, maybe it is to a certain extent, but it's got, if you've got a water line in your refrigerator and electrical, all that stuff has to be disconnected and properly disconnected so that when we get to the point of reconnecting it into the new facility, we know what all the connections are and all what needs to happen. So that's why we're looking at this is it's a best practice to have people who take the dismantle the equipment, disconnect it from the existing facility, also be the same group that reconnects it. So it's a best practice. This you say is if you disconnected it, it was working when you disconnected it. Now, when you reconnect it and make it energize it in the new facility, it needs to work like it did back in the old facility. And so what we're looking to do is, is ask what and it'll be in the uh, request that we will be asking you in item 6.3 is to take, we, we want to contract with McDowell and Gordon, the, uh, the effort to not only dismantle and disconnect, but then to reconnect everything back in the new facility. So what they'll do is they'll disconnect it, electrical, plumbing, gas, et cetera, they'll prepare it, and then the movers will come in and actually move the equipment to the new facility. They'll put it in place, and then they walk away, and then we ask McDowell and Gordon's vendors Come in and reconnect it to the new facility. That makes sense. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to the next slide. So this is what this equipment looks like. And I, and I recognize it's kind of busy, but you know, one of the first ones is, is like the uh, EDM, the electrical discharge machine. The best way to describe it is this is the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. It's got fluids in it, it's got electrical, it's got plumbing. I mean, take a look at some of this electrical, look at all the plumbing that we're gonna to have to deal with. It's, I mean, in essence, you could go in there and just cut these things off, but then the person who has to reinstall it needs to say, is it, I, where'd this pipe come from? Or what would this pipe do? So again, people who are disconnecting it and dismantling it are the people who are gonna be putting it back together and connecting it and energizing it at the new facility. Okay. So go to the next slide. So this is so why why is it a half million dollars to move? This is well guess what? Uh, we're talking about riggers, forklifts. Uh, a lot of this stuff is not people movable. You're going to need to use equipment. We've got lathes, uh, we've got bench equipment, mills, and a good number of this equipment that's going to be placed in the ATSI. Any we questions? questions? Trustee Martin. Uh, this is our uh, board meeting in uh, last year in January, we did a uh, request for. Uh, we did a guaranteed Mac. I'm sorry, no. the movers. Which item is that? The move is to answer the question, moved into off the bid. It is 5.4. 5.4. Yes, it did go off for RFP, and it turns out that one of our major movers in this project is a minority business enterprise. And we went out, um, when we took it out for bid, we did the bid for on-call moving services so that we would have a moving company on call as we moved all of these um, equipment to different facilities. We had we chose to take an on-call approach 
because we didn't know, we don't know what we don't know when we're going through the process of construction and what it may take to, to move. So that's why we did it on call uh, with the board. That was February of 2021. And uh, the amount that was approved was a base amount, uh, but on-call is exactly that in the same way that we have on-call electricians, on-call architects. As services are needed on-call, we bring them in, but because the authority is obviously much higher than uh, what we had anticipated. So that's for the move. That, that's all I need though, thank you. When we add these parts together, the physical move plus the disconnect, reconnect, we're talking about what? 1.5 or so? Yes. yes. Okay. So we knew we were going to have to move them. But when exactly did we figure out it was? A good idea, which it is, I'm sure. The way you explained it, it certainly is a good idea to have, particularly the architect, be the one to reassemble this material, get it in place. That came, I mean, that was not part of the original agreement with McGowan going in terms of what they were going to do for us, correct? That's correct. Okay. It was only the construction project. So we self-selected, we self-selected to identify contractors that are already working on the contract, I'm sorry, working on the project through McGowan Gordon because they're familiar with the infrastructure of the building. We could have gone to somebody else and another plumbing and electrical company to do the disconnect, disassemble and reassemble of all of this equipment, but we would be risking their lack of knowledge of the project and the walls and the connections and things that they have to do, the amount of concrete that needs to be underneath uh, some of this equipment to avoid any damage. So that we, this is a, uh, on that piece that you're referring to with McGowan Gordon is a change order uh, that we have on the agenda, but it's a self initiated change order in this case and not like in contrast to when we hit the roof, where it was like, oh, we go into the roof and we discover whatever we discover and it results in a change order. In this case, we've self-selected it because it's the best approach for the safety of the equipment. We, and I think I would add that we weren't, especially going back to uh, Trustee Osborne's question, when we went into this, we truly did not know and, to, and have any way of anticipating how much of the equipment would be going and how much would be staying. And so working with the faculty through last semester, uh, I think Jeff and Don told me yesterday they've been getting these calculations since June. So that's, that's probably more than you asked for, but I want to be as thorough as possible to help you understand. I appreciate that. It's a certainly it's a significant amount of money. I don't know if it's a good comparison of the roof and this yeah. process. I mean, clearly, this was our uh, right, right, right. Yes. I was doing it in contrast. Yeah, yeah, but we wound up paying for both, so I don't know that that's a good comparison. Um, it certainly makes sense. It's just a surprise um, to realize it was going to cost that much. Thank you for the explanation. Yeah. I, have, I have a question. Mr. Chair. Yes, you read. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, my question actually relates to the very first slide. Um, and perhaps you guys can go back to that. Further back? No, I think it's the very first one that you all had. The one right before that. There, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Could you could you probably talk a little bit further about uh, just these numbers that are indicated on, on this list? 
uh, in particularly, I am concerned or uh, not really concerned, but would like for you to talk a little bit more about uh, the MBE, WBE numbers. I know you all are too young to remember uh, uh, cassette or, or record players, but if I was a, a record player, this would sound like a broken record because I keep saying the same thing every meeting, uh, but would like for you to highlight these numbers. Um, and then I have some comments I'd like to make uh, afterwards. Uh, I'm not sure what you. Uh, the uh, percentage of. Um, right. So the percentages haven't uh, changed since we began the project. That number has pretty much remained static. Uh, we do our best to identify. Uh, we, you know, as you know, working with this project made that. Um, we uh, stressed that whoever got the project that we had. Um, minority uh, and women-owned business and veteran-owned business participation in terms of subcontractors. Yeah, and uh, I think that probably goes to the heart of my potential uh, editorial comments that I'm going to make at this time, which are uh, the other day, I appreciate the staff giving me a tour of our uh, facility on Truce. And I had an opportunity uh, to, to really uh, marvel at the good work that has been done uh, in that facility, but I was slightly disappointed with the workforce. Uh, and so this comment probably is more so for our uh, vendor in terms of ensuring that we are pushing them, uh, as we've talked about many different times, the importance of uh, ensuring that our workforce reflects uh, the diversity of the community in which uh, this project resides. Uh, and I am hopeful that as we move forward, it sounds like we're on time, we're on budget, the facility looks great. Uh, but uh, I think we're missing an opportunity on such a large scale public project uh, to have individuals who live within the community, who uh, work within the community uh, to be working on, on a signature project, uh, not just on this campus, uh, this particular site, but all, also the other two uh, for them to uh, take pride and ownership in it. And so I'm hopeful uh, that as we move forward uh, with not only this capital project, but other projects within the institution that we have an opportunity uh, to potentially reflect the great diversity of our uh, community. Uh, because it's not, it's, it's great that we're meeting the, the numbers and we met them, but as we get toward the end, uh, as I said in the beginning of this project and my broken record spiel is that we should be um, uh, exceeding these numbers uh, in ensuring that uh, local participation and diversity uh, is reflected. And I did not unfortunately get an opportunity to see that. Matter of fact, I probably only saw one person of color uh, and that person was holding a stop sign outside the facility uh, when I was there and everybody inside uh, were all white males. I didn't see a person, uh, one, one woman, uh, one person of color inside the facility working at all. And so obviously that goes uh, down a bit further uh, into the weeds as it relates to workforce. Uh, but that's more so where I'm concerned about and something that I think that we have to uh, ensure that we are getting aspirational goals, but we're pushing the envelope uh, and ensuring that we're doing better uh, and I'm hopeful that someday we don't have to have this conversation, uh, but I do think it's important to uh, provide uh, these editorial comments. And if someone has a response, great. If not, uh, you best believe I'm gonna continue this uh, uh, conversation uh, as we move forward. I appreciate uh, that we do have a docket item uh, uh, later in the agenda uh, that uh, almost half of those uh, resources go to, they are slated to go to uh, two minority vendors. Uh, but again, what does that workforce look like moving those things? Uh, so there's again, a different topic, but uh, uh, I, I'm hopeful that we are able to uh, pay some closer attention to that uh, as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Trustee. Trustee Marston. Mr. Chair, um, I just want to briefly say I, I echo uh, Trustee Reed's sentiments. I think for the five years I've been on here, we, we've talked about this, but I also want to caution us, including Trustee P, that we do not legally have um, the right to make to mandate any um, minority or women uh, participation. So we want to applaud those 
vendors um, that are doing that because we do not have a disparity study, which is required by uh, law uh, to do that. Um, hopefully we will be able to be in a position where we can possibly partner with some other public entities to get one. But until that, we are a little different from the city of Kansas City, who does have a disparity study and had one uh, thanks to the work of Trustee Reed when he was on the uh, city council. But without that, we do have to caution that because we do open ourselves up to litigation from non-minority and non-women owned businesses when we mandate um, or even suggest that there has to be a percentage of disadvantaged businesses because we don't legally have the right to do that without uh, the Supreme Court's requirement that there be a disparity study first identifying and, 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 and stating that we are um, not doing what we need to be doing with respect to our contracts. So I just want us to keep that in mind that um, while we applaud our, the efforts of our contractors and our vendors, and we do want to continue to make suggestions, we, we cannot mandate um, their numbers. Um, so that, that's something that we probably need to, to put on the front burner is working on getting the disparity study and finding the million dollars to do that. Thanks. Well, I, I, if I could respond. Yeah, thank you, and, and I appreciate uh, Senator Washington's comments, uh, and I and I I certainly, uh, as you alluded to, know firsthand the importance of the disparity study, having led that uh, during my time on the city council, uh, and I caution and temper my uh, remarks as I started at the onset of uh, my comments in terms of these are editorial remarks, uh, as we. Uh, go uh, later in the future in our aspirational goals. Yes, I think you have uh, helped uh, drive the ball down the field a little further is that 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 is the direction in which we need to make sure we we're going in. Uh, and I want to make sure uh, as a member of this board uh, that uh, that's the direction that we we uh, work with our uh, municipal government, uh, the, the school district, the county uh, to ensure that we are, we're participating. Participating in that, uh, so uh, I appreciate uh, your uh, additional editorial comments, uh, so that there is no confusion as it relates to anything that I'm talking about. But it's important that we, we're talking about it now, uh, so that we're moving forward in the future uh, to participate and ensuring that these type of capital projects and other projects uh, have this level of participation. So, thank you. So while I'm uh, very pleased with the 52% of minority and women-owned uh, business participation that we have with our vendors, I think the point is well taken that having the contractors is one thing, uh, but the workforce is quite another. So we'll continue. I pass the concerns on uh, to our um, construction manager. Or that's not a good call. Yeah, construction manager at risk and uh, made them aware of uh, when it was brought to my attention uh, because uh, that is something that they certainly could have some uh, control over. Thank you both for your comments. Thank you, Dr. Meany. And um, continue, Dr. Meany. So on uh, consent, I'll just highlight a couple of these. The appointment of the secretary and alternate secretary, um, taking a different approach and uh, recommending Sandra Garcia as the official board secretary and certifying all of the meetings and uh, Eureka Patton, who is uh, working in the office, will be the uh, alternate secretary and the person behind the scenes doing a lot of uh, the things in getting preparation for uh, for the meeting. You'll see a lot of funding from external sources that is related to our campaign as was recently highlighted. Quite a few, uh, our commencement venue, we're diversifying our locations every year around our service area. And this year, Cable Dahmer, Cable Dahmer, arena is uh, the location uh, that could um, accommodate all of the needs, mainly the date, but it also is providing us with the technology, and uh, which is huge. The technology is huge. Uh, that sometimes when we're down at municipal is a 
that's a whole nother price tag. Uh, so that's uh, that's good. Uh, Hotspots and the media management system. Those were approved last year under emergency authority because we went into offering our classes virtual and we thought we would be done with it. That contract ends uh, in August, those contracts end in August. Uh, but given where we are, we want to make sure that we've got this technology in our pocket should we need it. So we did not take those out to bid. We're asking to renew that um, emergency authority because it's still an emergency that we did not anticipate. We thought by August we were going to be good to go. So uh, we have a slip sheet. We and this is what happens sometimes in <coughs> August or any board meeting because we have people who accept offers since the uh, meeting was published. And so we have an administrator, Kim Green, who will be the director of campus operations at the Maplewoods campus. She's an internal employee from the Longview campus, currently, I think, the enrollment manager at the uh, Longview campus. And Ashley Snyder Cox, a faculty member in the health sciences. So that is an overview of the consent agenda. That's all I have. Thank you, Dr. Beattie. And so let's, we're, uh, we are going into close later on. So I, we're going to go right into the work session right now. Regular uh, session. Or regular session. Um, let me catch up. Dr. Beattie. Thank you for this opportunity to provide my regular uh, report. We are returning to campus. Uh, our students are back. And uh, we've had a number of welcome back activities. They had a Wolfstock Music Festival at Blue River. They had the Wolfpack Welcome at um, Penn Valley. We also had the same occur at Longview. And I just want to give you some highlights on how we're returning. We are, um, we have enhanced nightly. So we are going to have classes in person. We still have 15% of our classes still virtual. We have, a, so that reduces the traffic somewhat. We've got a mask mandate. We only lifted it for a week and then uh, things started to turn. So uh, we brought it right back. In fact, I think it was less than a week. Uh, we have enhanced cleaning with the virus sites nightly. We've been hosting vaccination sites. And we should have had a drawing today. Rosemary, by any chance, do you know uh, the winners? I haven't been notified yet of the winners. But uh, yesterday ended our drawing that we had for five $1,000 um, incentive uh, payments for employees. We're also offering uh, students free classes to try and incentivize the um, uh, vaccine. And we're still keeping a plan B in our pocket, which is why we have some things on the agenda, uh, those emergency items that I'm uh, requesting to extend, for example. Uh, we're still keeping plan Bs in our pocket should things escalate. In terms of enrollment, our enrollment is up. Now, this was Monday. I think I saw the report today. Uh, so anyway, we're, we were up over 2020, which is good news. We're still chasing 2019, but today the report said we were only down 9%, but I'm showing you the uh, report as of Monday. So 2019 is the benchmark we're striving for because that was pre-COVID. Uh, so this is pretty good. I've got information about some of our colleagues in the area, and I will say that we are um, uh, performing uh, above some of our um, competitors in the region. I won't call it out since this is a public meeting, but if you're interested, I have it right here. <laughs> um, Do you think, um, I've been thinking about the distance learning, and, and I, I've noticed that we're we're, we're keeping that protocol. And 
do you see that distance learning is, is helping us increase our numbers for enrollment? Uh, our MCC online campus enrollment has been increasing over time. This is prior to COVID, and that's just the nature of how higher education is moving. But we're not an online college, and so we are being very strategic in, um, I don't want to say capping it, but capping, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use that word. Um, we, we want to keep that at a uh, place where it is. Um, you know, we don't spite our nose. What is the saying? Spite our nose, nose spite, spite our face. Right, 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 right. You know, if you've got <laughs> all these classes online and, you know, then you got them in person. And, you know, while there are people who need both, it, we just, we need to be strategic about that because the mission of our college is not to be an online college. But it is, grow, has grown and uh, continues to grow and that should, we should see that level off. So I think, uh, yeah, so I think that uh, actually online has I'm trying to remember, um, but I think they still had the highest growth this semester. Thank you, Dr. Beatty. And it's been that way probably for the last four or five years. Trustee Mark. Um, Dr. B, where are we in? It's very hard to remember since this past year has been so strange. Where are we in terms of days out from? First day of class and classes start on Monday or Tuesday? Which one? Tuesday. 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 So we're just the next time you'll be making the comparison, or I guess you're doing that on a daily basis. Oh, yeah, we do that on a daily basis now. <laughs> yeah. So I'll probably send you all a uh, board letter that gives you a um, you know, once school starts and give you a capture of where enrollment is. Now, bear in mind, we enroll throughout the semester because we have other sessions. We've got, uh, hey, wait. I don't want to call it late start, but I'm, uh, I'm getting a loss. So short-term classes. Well, it's, it's not <laughs> That's either. what we call it on the website. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, 12 week classes. Eight week classes we still have. So some of the challenges we still have is our state's perspective on vaccinations that um, I think prevents us from having broader vaccination uh, numbers in our region, the politicizing of mask wearing and so forth. So we've had a lot of conversations internally about accountability and holding everyone accountable when you don't see people with the mask on or worn correctly. Uh, we just had our emergency management team meeting yesterday and things are leveling off. I don't, you know, but we've got to uh, maintain that for at least uh, two weeks, but the data that we've seen, it is leveling off. So obviously we have the Delta variant, but in this region, it's starting to uh, level off. And then there's striking the balance between quality and safety. Uh, I don't think anybody would argue that uh, offering classes, um, offering classes in a virtual environment is ideal, especially in all disciplines. And so, you know, we don't want to sacrifice that quality, but we do have to balance it with safety. So we're trying to do our best, and it's there are hard decisions to make, but. Uh, we're very aligned with all of the, you know, check throughout the state and throughout the uh, region in terms of all of the other colleges, uh, just to make sure that I'm not, um, that we're not, we don't have unrealistic expectations. Our office team has changed. Cindy, of course, retired. Tamika Thompson is promoted to Director of Campus Operations. Uh, uh, I should say interim Director of Campus Operations at Longview. So we're happy, but sad to see her go. Uh, Tara Campbell resigned her position for personal reasons, effective on July 30th. Uh, Eureka has joined the team as Senior Executive Assistant to the Chancellor. And Josh O'Brien, who's here, has joined the team as Chief of Staff. We'll put uh, 
pictures, uh, faces with names so that you know who they are, even though it's hard to see folks with these masks on. Wanted to also give you an update on uh, policy and procedure updates. Uh, probably two years ago, three years ago, we uh, started down this road of an overhaul or a re comprehensive review of all of our policies. So within the last year in 2021, we had uh, 23 new and or revised policies and procedures adopted, 11 new revised rescission policies and procedures pending right now. Bulk of items from the legal unit and human resources have been this year. And you might remember, probably would have been good to include, I don't think we did, um, it probably would have been good to include some time ago, we had a chart and we showed you by department how we were going to be approaching all of the policies. So this year's focus will be on business and finance and curriculum and instruction. Obviously, if there's some compliance needs or some change, other changes that we need to make, uh, we will uh, do so uh, with other departments, but that'll be the intentional focus. Ms. Garcia, did I leave anything out? Anything you want to add? We had the MCCA executive leadership retreat and we had a golf team and I think Michael Brown might know how to play a little bit of golf. He just needs a little bit of warm up. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he was knocking it out of the park. Many thanks to Sue uh, Gotches for uh, joining us uh, because she has quite the athleticism as well. And, uh, Trustee Washington did great. I was the cart driver. I didn't. Even, I, I stood for the picture with a golf club, but I did not. I did not. But every now and then they said, "Y'all, you want to come and try?" So uh, I did not. Uh, want to also uh, bring to your attention on a sad note that we lost a full-time employee, police officer Rusty Cotton, or uh, Russell known as Rusty Cotton. Uh, he passed away suddenly and um, he served at the BR, I mean, at Blue River since 2012, worked in other law enforcement agencies and remembered for his sense of duty and dedication. Uh, yesterday, we gave his daughter who just graduated from high school and was enrolled at MCC a scholarship for $2,000 uh, since that would have been the benefit that she would have received had he been living. So uh, very sad to see him go and it was a very emotional uh, time yesterday with, uh, with the family. So it was, uh, it was good though. So she's taken care of. Uh, Dr. Meyer and his whole team have wrapped their arms around her already and providing her with the resources for her to be successful. Faculty Senate report. She's got a new dude. I didn't even know who she was. <laughs> the mask alone. Oh, I know. Chancellor Beatty, Vice President Brown, members of the board, faculty, staff, administrators, and the public. Scientist Jacob Bernowski wrote that knowledge is an unending adventure at the edge of uncertainty. <laughs> As MCC approaches the start of the fall 2001 semester, it is a situation that is not exactly business as usual because of necessity and innovation. Faculty members are building new syllabus policies and language related to quarantine, contact tracing, mask enforcement, and alternative assignments and attendance policies. MCC faculty and students are preparing for a semester that is not quite like what came before COVID-19. And while faculty are largely um, optimistic that society has tools like vaccines and mask mandates, we're also pragmatists. I wrote this from quarantine myself as three members of my immediate family, despite being fully vaccinated, all tested positive for symptomatic COVID-19. While my family members are recovering from their infections and I cling luckily to my negative status, it is a reminder that the pandemic situation is still changing with new surges and new variations. As faculty, the work ahead of us is much more than classroom teaching. 
After nearly a year and a half of virtual teaching, largely with some exceptions, the nervousness and excitement are palpable in the dozens of emails I receive hourly. Preparing for the unexpected, faculty are using daily seating charts when they can to help with contact tracing. They're writing language in their syllabus to encourage compliance with quarantine and isolation policies that could last for weeks for themselves and or clusters of students in their classes. There's an upcoming Innovation Academy cohort that's beginning this fall, with, which is an extension of the Chancellor's Innovation Council. That's a good one. The Guided Pathways Project is also gearing up for a rollout next fall with faculty providing substantive feedback about the courses and options for the curricular plans that MCC will help encourage our mission goals of retention and completion. At the brink of the fall semester, after more than a year of largely virtual teaching, I draw from the book, Meaningful Hope for Teachers in Times of High Anxiety and Low Morale by Nolan and Spitzlin. Keep a classroom record of five good things that were achieved each day. Whatever that means, achievement should be acknowledged. Mark and celebrate your five victories. It matters. Thank you. MCC faculty, oh, <laughs> full time and part time, I'm honored to represent you and thank you. Please accept my gratitude for the tireless and often thankless work that you do behind the scenes and in the classroom, preparing for a, the uncertain future and helping students develop the skills that, to do the same. And thank you to the sports staff and the administration that empower the amazing and transformative things that happen in MCC classrooms, labs, and spaces. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge we've got two new governance leaders uh, that are joining us. Lisa Bray is the new governance leader for the Administrators Association, and uh, Keith Castor, who is probably joining us virtually, uh, is at Longview, and he is the staff council. Uh, representatives. So we look forward to hearing from them in the future. That concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Beattie. And so this time we'll go into uh, four trustees business and uh, work on a consent agenda. And I understand that uh, as we uh, go through the consent, there might be a uh, Item concerning uh, 2.3 in our work session. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so maybe we're uh, we're going to pull 2.3. Were there any other? Uh, 2.2. Sorry, 2.2 uh, approval of the minutes. Or were there any other uh, consent items? Oh, pardon me. Are, are you asking these things so we don't vote on them all, all at once? Yeah, I was I was going to read the uh, background on consent. I guess I could. Uh, agenda item of routine nature will be marked with an asterisk located immediately before the item. Unless a board member requests an item be removed for discussion, the agenda will be approved upon a motion and the second of the board and unanimous adoption shall have the same validity as it validity as if each action were separately moved seconded and adopted okay so asterisk things have to be uh you have to it, it only applies to asterisk things uh currently with the items that town uh, yes okay 2.2 2.3 2.4 so we're not talking about five uh it would some of those items in the purchasing uh 5.8 is 5.9 5.10, 5.11, all the way through 5.15. Yeah, I'd like to pull out some. Okay. I'll Trustee pull out uh, 5.12. And the um, treasurer's report, or no, 5.12. Five point, five point five 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 two. Five point twelve. 
That's that's it. Very good. Anyone else? And um, so I'll take a motion uh, to approve uh, consent items, all those items except for the minutes 2.2, item 2.2, and the uh, looks like purchase of Kansas City Star Archive, item 5.12. I'll take a motion. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Um, I guess we kind of need to know why you want to remove it. Well, we're, we're going to circle back around and find out. Uh, but this is just for uh, the rest of the consent items that um, were not removed. Did you? Um, okay. So I'll take a roll call. Uh, Trustee Martin? Yes. Osborne? Uh, yes. Reed? Aye. Trustee Washington? Aye. Very good. It looks like consent agenda passes. Uh, let's go to uh, item number 2.2, .2, approval of the minutes. Actually, I need some point of clarification. Uh, Trustee Reed? I don't think you called on yourself to, to vote in that last vote, uh, although it did pass. Uh, I don't believe I heard you vote. True. I did not. Um, and that's an odd, you know, Trustee Reed. That's a that's a, that was whether or not the chair votes or not. That's a very good question. They follow the vote. No, I, I've I've chaired meetings for the past decade, and the chair does vote. So yes. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Reed. Um, see, I told you I need you here. Uh, I vote aye for those consent items that were not pulled. Very good. And then Trustee Martin, 2.2. You needed some advice on. Uh, uh, yes, 2.2 2. 2, uh, are the minutes from the last meeting. And there is basically a typographical or editorial change. Does that require a motion? I think you need to amend to and specifically that's state, it, yes, it? and correct okay. it by interlineation. Okay. Then I move to amend the minutes of the last meeting so that the very beginning under the chancellor's comments, we um, made an error in identifying uh, Dr. Jill Biden. And here she appears as second lady and we all know she's first lady. <laughs> That's my reason. So I am asking to amend the minutes to reflect first lady status for Mrs. Biden. Second. Very good. It's been uh, moved and seconded. Uh, any comp any discussion? You know, I didn't ask if uh, there were any opposition on that last vote. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Osborne? Aye. Trustee Reed? Which which one are we voting on now? Are we still on the uh, last one or are we on first lady? Uh, first lady. Okay, I went to ladies. Hi. <laughs> first lady. We're going to change the language. Uh, Get it changed. Aye. Aye. And then uh, Trustee Washington. Uh, aye. And then uh, Trustee Brown. Aye. So if we could make that uh, correction, that would be most appreciative. For our historical record. And now we can take up the issue of uh, 5.12 on the consent agenda. Trustee Holmes. I don't have anything to add. I just want to vote. I see. So, Dr. Beatty, what is the uh, Kansas City Star archive uh, that we're purchasing? Uh, this item, this is an online uh, database that. Um, would give our students and uh, staff access to the Kansas City Star records from 1880 to present for opportunity. This will support teaching and learning in the classroom and uh, various classes. Very good. I'll take a motion to approve. I move approval. Very good. A second. 
We'll take one as a second. move and one as a second. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, uh, trustee Beatty, uh, so this is a database. They can do articles and do, the, do they get the full article or they just get a synopsis of the article? The whole article. Get the full article and they're able to print it out and that such of things. It's a terrific thing. Uh, how long does it last? Forever. Holy mackerel, that's awesome. For this number? Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. Are we, do you think we could share that with us? Never mind. <laughs> there might be other entities that would have an interest in that. Thank you, Dr. Beatty. Uh, we'll call a roll. Uh, Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Holmes? Nay. Trustee Reed? Aye. Trustee Marston? Aye. Trustee Brown? All right, so that motion passes, and, and that looks like we have done it for consent. Calendar, um, Dr. B. We are we going to still in the work? No, we're done. We're in regular session. Uh, point, point of, part, uh, you keep calling her Beatty. It's Beatty, dude. Dr. Beatty. That is true. And she she's corrected me before too, Dr. Beatty. I apologize. Yeah, I can hear it loud and clear. I probably heard you say it in person uh, many times that that's correct. Get it right, man. Dr. Beatty, her husband would like that. It constricts my facial. Dr. Beatty, I apologize for that. Thank you. I'm a lifelong learner. So I'll be in there. Thank you, Trustee Reed. And so, uh, so are we going into? Looks like two point six. Two point six board policy approval of human resources. Uh, we brought this policy for lodging at the last board meeting, and this is regarding our recruitment and hiring. That one thing I'd point out is that there, uh, this policy still aligns and allows for. Uh, alignment with the MNEA contract where applicable. So, for example, when they uh, for committees and how they should be structured in the MNEA agreement, it says that a dean, the dean of instruction, would serve on the committee. Specifically, we make sure that that is still included in this policy, and I recommend approval. I'll take a motion for its approval. So moved. So moved. And, uh, so we'll take a, Holmes raise his hand, we'll take a second uh, from uh, Trustee Washington. Uh, any discussion? Any questions? Uh, we'll take a roll call vote uh, for approval. Uh, Trustee Martin? Aye. Trustee Holmes? Aye. Trustee Reed? Aye. Thank you. Trustee Washington? Aye. Trustee Brown? Aye. So that, that measure approves. Uh, let's move on to 2.7 board policy approval risk management. Two point seven uh, risk management. This is our workers' comp policy, and uh, I recommend approval. It was lodged uh, at our last board meeting. Very good. I'll take a motion for approval. Motion. So move uh, uh, Trustee Holmes. I'll take a second. Second. Very good. Trustee Washington. Uh, all those in favor, just say aye. 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 All those opposed? Very good. Looks like motion passes. 2.8, Dr. Beauty. Board policy approval, curriculum, and instruction. Dr. Bain. <laughs> um, this is for, you just asked about distance learning. This is um, our policy for distance learning. In revising the policy, we created a policy and procedure. The main uh, difference you will see are the definitions that are included in here from the Higher Learning Commission. I recommend approval. We're good, I'll take a motion for approval. So moved. Holmes, I'll take a second. Second. Trustee Martin, thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
All those opposed? Very good. Looks like that motion carried on 2.8. Um, 2.9, biannual adoption of board policy, conflict of interest, and code of ethics. Our kind of speaks for itself. This is our biennial uh, approval that we bring to the board. And uh, so we're recommending approval for our ethics policy. Excuse me, ethics policy. Very good. I'll take a, a motion for approval. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Dr. Martin, any discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Very good. Like 2.9 is uh, passed. We're we'll going to uh, 3.1 administration. No. 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 Oh, no. I'm sorry about that. Looks like personnel. No. 5.1. Business finance. We presented the uh, details of the treasurer's report in the work session and took questions and had discussion. Uh, the full report is here and we recommend approval. I'll Sorry. take a motion for approval. Is there a second? Holmes? Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those, aye. All those opposed? Very good. Dr. Vandy, it looks like, uh, let me make sure. 5.2. Media buying services. Uh, we have brought this item, uh, brought this company to the board in a previous, uh, doing our RFP. We continue to expand and evaluate our brand. This last effort with our attachment efforts and strategic planning, have helped us to see it's time for us to revisit, um, just take another look at it. This is a good practice. Every three to five years, organizations look at their brand or you know, around five years. And this hasn't been evaluated since, I think, 2017. I think I saw some stuff from 2016. 2000, yeah, 2016 was the last time it was evaluated. This type of uh, strategy will help us to identify how we're going to uh, target uh, our strategies moving forward in our uh, markets. Thank you, Dr. Beatty. Uh, I look for a motion to, for approval. Look my trustee Washington. Can I get a second? Second. Second by trustee Reed. Um, any discussion? I do have a question. Trustee Martin. Uh, Chancellor, would you um, try to describe for me, I know it, it may not be possible at this point, but it appears that Arika is going to be doing two things. One, it's the brand, but they're also doing media buying. Yes. How is this uh, distributed, I guess? Because that's what they did, excuse me, that's what they did for us in the past, right, is media purchase. Correct. Okay. So how is the amount that we are requesting being distributed? I think I have a spreadsheet. Uh, I think I have a uh, spreadsheet that would... Um, highlight the details of the uh, dollars and how we spend marketing dollars. This specific amount here, I think for the most part is gonna go to this branding uh, initiative. In addition, there's some apprenticeship, uh, some other marketing programs and Dr. Swanson is back there giving me a nod that she has something to add to that. So I'll let her add that. I apologize. No need to apologize. So, so this particular item includes the advertising placement of which about 225,000 of it is our regular advertising that we would be placing. It includes also advertising for some of our grants like apprenticeship and the Educational Opportunity Center. The remaining 
up to 75,000 would go to the brand initiative. Do you have, no, off the top of your head, how much additional money we have for marketing? So our overall, if you count um, personnel, all of our digital advertising, so we our Google ads, those types of things. Um, if you put it all together, it's right around a million dollars. Okay. Including the personnel that we have. What's personnel? I don't quite understand that. So personnel, graphic designers, photographers, videographers, writers, um, our public relations work, okay. um, which said. is a big part of our marketing and branding. Okay. Dr. Swanson? Yes. Um, I think it was just last evening I saw um, an EOC, mm -hmm. which is, it really got my attention, and <laughs> I didn't even realize what I was watching until the end. So it was a good job. Can you say anything more about how does one go about um, assessing the brand? I guess that's what they're going to do. If there's a three phase, there's a phased approach. They um, will conduct some interviews. Luckily, through our strategic planning process and the charrettes that we've had, we've already had uh, some. We already have some of that information. Mm -hmm. But it's the voice of the customer going out and uh, talking with uh, the voice of the customer, having some internal conversations, developing a strategy based upon what they learn, and then we will. Um, make some decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Then Dr. Bain, will they, um, during this process, are they working to the board and we can show us what they're, what they're working on? We can certainly give you a report after the work is done. Thank you. Any other questions? A question, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, Trustee Reed. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I just want to command, um, the communication staff and Dr. Beatty, uh, your leadership team for your forward thinking. Um, we have talked about this in our last board retreat in terms of marketing efforts on behalf of the college. And I think that this is a, a step in the right direction. I know that there uh, potentially should be uh, and could be more uh, windows of opportunity for us to do more branding on behalf of MCC. Uh, and making sure that we are the number one brand that people see. Just the other night, I was out at the Royals game, as I had been uh, the past couple of weeks, and uh, see, saw the brand there and was talking to some of the staff members out at the uh, at the K, and they were talking about how their students at MCC. So they were glad to see uh, our marketing efforts there and saw uh, some of our marketing efforts on the side of uh, buses and some of the bus shelters and other places within the, the entire community. I know that there's still some room for improvement. I think that uh, what this uh, money will allow uh, has been allocated for allows us to further enhance uh, some of that work. And so I'm looking forward to, to, to some of the outcomes for that and also uh, the work ahead. So I think we're moving in the right direction and I wanted to uh, really just give a, a, some sort of uh, appreciation to you guys so that you hear that from us. I know that we often say here's where uh, ways that you should approve or you can improve. I think this is, uh, has, has been improved and uh, hoping that uh, uh, we see more results from it. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee. Any further questions or comments? I take a motion to approve uh, item 5.2 purpose media volume service. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh that's right. We're in a discussion now. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Thank you, Trustee. Aye. Uh, thank you, Dr. Beatty. Uh, item 5.3. Item 5.3 is uh, for furniture. Um, we had a, so when we brought this item originally, for furniture, actually, Dr. Chrishell and I had a lot of conversation about this and some of the other, a uh, couple of other items that are in here in terms of, do we go to the board and ask for an open, uh, a blank check, which I knew wasn't gonna fly, or do we come to the board and ask for things as needed? 
uh, this again associated with the move initially was our thought in bringing this uh, to the board and when we brought it as um, uh, for the move and not knowing what to anticipate in terms of furniture. But as um, we know all happened, we had uh, COVID. Once we realized that we were able to use COVID dollars, we were able to use COVID dollars to do a furniture replacement that we uh, went through. We came back and asked for more because we used that money to replace um, the furniture. Now this is for the purchase of furniture for Advanced Technical Skills Institute. So I just wanted to give you that uh, history as to why this we have come back for additional authority, and it is likely that we could come back again because we are still in the moving process. But you know, it was either come and ask for blanket authority with a furniture company through the bidding process, or to ask you for additional authority as we needed it, and we chose to take the second route. And I recommend approval. Thank you, Dr. Beattie. I'll take a motion to approve. 5.3. Move by home. Can I get a second? Second. Second, Trustee Martin. Uh, any discussion? Any questions? All those in favor of 5.3 purchases? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Dr. Beatty, item 5.4. Michael Brown, you're going to have to get our name right. I, well, we're going to send you to one of those classes on Monday so that you can learn how to pronounce yeah, Dr. Beatty's name. Okay, so answer there's a question. There, there's a, you know, I served with a representative Beatty, uh, Gail McCain Beatty. And, um, you know, I, I served with her for five or six years, and she didn't mind me calling her that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. You did yeah. say Gail's name right. <laughs> yeah, so she didn't mind because you had it right. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, so you had a lot of practice. So you're you're proving my point. Monday we're sending you to class, bro. Thank you. 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 She was in our leadership, you know. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Bain. I, I apologize. Uh, thank you, Trustee. Item 5.4, moving expenses. This is the, well, obviously we talked about this quite a bit during the um, uh, work session, but this is the same type of situation in terms of on-call moving services, as it says in the item, and we wanna bring this to you on a project by project basis. And uh, this will be for moving the equipment from BT. And again, until we finish through this process, we will likely come back again and ask for more authority on moving expenses because we still have ATSI. I mean, we still have uh, the Blue River East Campus. So there's just give me a heads up. Thank you, Dr. Betty. I'll take a motion to approve. Oh. Moved by Trustee Holmes. We have a second. second. Thank you, Trustee Washington. All those in favor of item 5.4? Aye. 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 Very good. Trustee Reed? Aye. Thanks, sir. Uh, motion's been approved. Item 5.4. Dr. Beatty. And uh, 5.5. 5.5. This is. Um, Water mitigation and recovery. We uh, had a incident in the AC where we had a water uh, water leak with major water damage, and I executed the emergency authority by contacting the board chair, who gave us authority to move forward. So this is a ratification uh, of this item, and I recommend approval. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. I'll take a motion to approve. Thank you, Trustee Holmes, Trustee Washington. Any uh, questions or discussion? Uh, Dr. Bain, was this a where was where did we have this incident occur? In the AC uh, in the administrative center. Oh, that's your building. 
Yes. I see. In that, is it still? Um, are there? Is it still pure <coughs> water or? No, I think we've gotten it uh, handled. Very good. Very good. And this is our insurance, so you know, largely be covered by insurance. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. There's no way that that water could get to the restrooms on the second floor in B. I have to uh, share, um, Dr. Pichel and Mr. Ullman, I have to share with you some concerns that have emerged about the bathrooms. <laughs> mm -hmm. I bring them up periodically, so thank you for indulging me. <laughs> Direct the next meeting. That way, if you don't mind. Uh, I'll take a vote. Uh, all those in favor, item 5.5 for this for uh, Administrative Center's water mitigation and recovery. Uh, aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, next item is for uh, to replace the uh, building skylights at Maplewood's campus. A similar issue, uh, the water that they are so long for replacing when it rains, they stand under the skylight and they can sing in the rain if they wow. like. So we want to make sure that we get those replaced because they shouldn't have to sing in the rain in any building in uh, at MCC. So does that help our students open? I'm sorry. Uh, does that not help our students open? <laughs> I take a motion for approval. Second. Very good, Trustee Holmes, Trustee Martin. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? 5.6? Aye. 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 Thank you. Dr. Beatty, 5.8. Seven. 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 Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is our student experience and retention consulting. We are um, heightening, as you heard in the uh, faculty senate's comments, our focus on uh, retention. And more importantly, I think Trustee Brown asked me at the last meeting, what have we learned from COVID? And I've been saying, what are we going to keep, trash, or tweak? And some of the things we learned through COVID, like the virtual advising and how students move through our enrollment process and how we could change our processes to make them more seamless for students, that instead of them coming and then walking away, that would create a better uh, experience for our students. So we're engaging this uh, contract, uh, this consulting firm to uh, go through that process with us. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. Uh, I'll take a motion for approval. Move approval. Thank you, Trustee Martin. A second. Sure, second. Second. Thank you, Trustee Reed. Uh, any questions? Uh, Dr. Reed, I have a question. You know, my daughter's working in recruitment and retention, and she's finding, she says that the university that she works in is seriously behind the times. Mm -hmm. And that she's, she says there's databases and things out there that they can tie into that help students along the way mm -hmm. for their career and their planning mm -hmm. and all those wonderful details. Mm -hmm. And somehow we're missing some of that, mm -hmm. that especially at the, the mm -hmm. university that she's currently working at. Mm -hmm. So the consultants are probably going to come in and identify maybe some of these mm -hmm. things. Well, I, and I would I would add to that uh, that we have a lot of one of the things we've learned already is we have a lot of the practices. We're just not consistent in that experience. So if you, if a student goes to Longview or goes to Maplewoods, how they move through the process should be the same. So the point that you're making, we have a career exploration software uh, and we have career services, but it's typically on the back end, where if we move that to the front end, where a student can make informed intent about how they want to how they want to navigate or what their major would be so that they can be successful and get a job afterwards instead of going through a program and then saying, oh, I think I want to do this. And then they realize that's not what they want. They have to go back and get retrained. So 
that's just an example to support what your daughter's experiencing. I won't say that we're out of date, but our, our processes aren't always streamlined and aligned in a way because we've got some good stuff happening, but it's not happening consistently. So we're going to take all these good practices that are happening across the college and put them in a streamlined process that's consistent for our students. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Beatty. Any other questions? All those in favor? 5.7? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Dr. Beatty, 5.8. Dr. Beatty, 5. All those, any opposed? My, forgive me. No. Thank you, Trustee Home. That, uh, that issue passes uh, 5.7. Uh, thank you. And uh, Dr. Beatty, 5.8. Oh, my okay. Thank you. Item 6.1 is a lease agreement for Children's Mercy Hospital for parking spaces, uh, especially as we're continuing. Um, uh, we, we still have some virtual classes. We know we have uh, these spaces available, and it's a revenue generating opportunity for us. Recommend approval. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. I take a motion for approval 6.1. Second. Trustee Holmes, Trustee thank you. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor, 6.1? Aye. 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 Thank you, Trustee. Uh, any opposed? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Bailey, 6.2. Item 6.2 is uh, we have an on-call engineer and we are looking to make some improvements, capital improvements to the Penn Valley Campus's central heating and cooling plant and uh, with recommended approval. Thank you, Dr. Beatty. I'll take a motion for approval. Second. Thank you, Second by Trustee Reed. Thank you, Trustees. Uh, any questions? I have one question. Uh, Dr. Mary, what is M&R funding? Maintenance and repair. Oh, very good. So that, that's coming out of the funding that we set aside uh, to maybe look at as that's, ongoing. That's correct. Very good. Thank you. Uh, uh, all those in favor of item 6.2, Penn Valley Central Plant Improvements? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Very good. Dr. 6.3. 6.3 is a self-initiated, not self-initiated, uh, <laughs> MCC-initiated change order. Uh, this is the item that we discussed in um, the work session regarding the um, inspection, dismantling, crating, and re-putting uh, the items back together in the infrastructure that currently exists uh, at the ATSI. And having one person uh, do it, it uh, do that work. And approval. Thank you. Uh, I'll take a motion for approval. Second. Home. Thank you, Trustee Washington. Uh, in discussion. Very good. All those in favor, item 6.3, change order. Aye. Aye. Thank you. It looks like we're um, at 7.1. No. 7.1 is consent. We do have a public. We do have a public comment. I didn't highlight that, that on your sheet. Very good. I appreciate that. And then, um, do we have um, our guest who is here yes. today? Yes. This is Todd Garinger. He is the president of the MNEA and requested. To make comment regarding the non privatization policy. Okay. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. The Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Board Members. Uh, as I'm an EA Union President, I would like to thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. Uh, the Union Council passed the following resolution, and I would like it included in its entirety in the public facing minutes. 
Whereas the non fraternization policy was lodged in January and approved in March by the Board of Trustees, it went through no shared governance process, an occurrence that has never happened in our recalled history at MCC. Whereas the revision of this policy did go through shared governance, was altered by person or persons unknown higher up the chain of command at MCC with no explanation, was removed from the standards of conduct policy approved in June. Whereas a blanket non fraternization policy has been deemed by governance groups and process systems at MCC to be disproportionately harmful to the LGBTQ plus community. Whereas the language in this policy requires employees, contractors, board members, and vendors to disclose their sexual orientation if their partner takes a single course at MCC, even if there's no supervisory or evaluative role that would cause concern for exploitation or abuse of power. Whereas the policy goes against MCC's spirit of MCC's own non-discrimination policy, board policy 3.0010, which states MCC prohibits discrimination, including harassment against any individual on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, including sexual orientation, pregnancy, gender identity, or expression, including transgender status, age, national origin, disability, genetic information, or any other class protected by law. Whereas the policy is so sweeping in scope that it may constitute harassment and is an unreasonable invasion of privacy that results in an outing policy for a protected class, even when there is no potential for exploitation in the relationship. Whereas the blanket policy assumes a cisgender heteronormative and anti-feminist lens. Whereas key stakeholders such as community members, faculty, students, adjunct faculty have not been included in the process, even though the policy impacts the aforementioned groups. Whereas a blanket policy that is inequitable to a marginalized group cannot be made equitable through procedures. Therefore, MCC NEA Union Council views this policy based passed by the MCC Board of Trustees in March of 2021 as a hostile action towards members of the LGBTQ plus community at MCC. We would respectfully ask that the MCC Board of Trustees would take steps to authorize a revision of the blanket policy to be crafted by the Chancellor's Policy Review Committee with language that protects students and employees from potentially exploitive relationships while not harming an already marginalized population. We further suggest that MCC include in its diversity, equity, and inclusion voices from the LGBTQ plus community. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Todd. Um, we're good. Give us a moment. Uh, first of all, I'm the one who uh, spearheaded this at the end of 2020. And uh, I found out that uh, employees can date students, and that's all there was to it. And I asked around to my friends in the business community who work for big corporations, uh, can you date your employees? And the answer was no. So then we got pushed back from um, people who said that they're consenting adults. And us in the business community said, well, it doesn't really matter if they're consenting adults, uh, they're employees, dating students, and it's going to get us sued. So then we began checking what other schools do. We checked with K State, KU, Northeastern, and Boston, and they have anti fraternization rules. So in early 2021, I began uh, with trustee uh, Skaggs pushing this through. Um, and I would pick up the phone and I would call Trustee Martin and I'd say, are we talking, are we working with teachers? Do they know what we're doing? Uh, what are their opinions? And I didn't hear anything back. And then as time goes on, we begin pushing this thing. And the reason is, is because us business people see this as a great big fat lawsuit. So whether you're gay, and by the way, the issue of being gay never had anything to do with it, never came up in any of our discussions. So here's the way it is. If you're a teacher or an employee, you can't date students, period. That's all there is to it. 
Thanks, Trustee. No, we were. Uh, uh, I just want to add a quick comment. And Trustee Mark. I don't think any of us, um, uh, we appreciate um, your comments, truly, but no one um, was thinking about this being an anti LGBTQ issue. Um, as you know, uh, Trustee Barn Brown, myself, and, and Trustee um, Skaggs have all also been in Jefferson City where this has been a concern. Um, in fact, one of my own friends had to leave because. I think sometimes when we um, are looking from the outside, we don't see that um, anyone in a higher position in the legal world has superior power over anyone under them. So like me as a senator, you don't have to work for me. If you're not a fellow senator, you're beneath me in the legal world. So I cannot have any fraternization with you, whether or not you work in my office or not. And unfortunately, the same is true when we have faculty members because they're just seen in the in the law as positions of power. And we actually, um, with uh, Trustee Holmes, um, Trustee Mark, and Trustee um, Skaggs already working on this, it just so happened that we actually had an issue and we didn't have a policy that could put that. And without a policy, that puts our entire institution at risk. So I think that we do uh, hear what, what, you're, what you um, guys are saying, and when we have talked about trying to figure out a way to make sure this works for everybody. But I, I will have to say, as an attorney, as someone who has witnessed this in Jefferson City, um, he's witnessed this, that we have to remember that I don't have to be your student. Um, if I am a student, period, if I'm at Mizzou and I'm a student, period, I can't date a professor, period. Now, we can get married uh, when I graduate or whatever, but if I'm dating you, I am putting the institution at risk. So I think that we have to keep that in mind. And no one's saying that you have to tell me what your sexual preferences are, and I definitely understand that. But we do have to make sure that we, we, we have this institution that is safe for all of our students. Trustee Brown. Uh, Trustee Brown, you I wanted to say uh, thank you for your comments today, and I, we appreciate your time and, and coming in and presenting your 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 argument on on this issue. It's important for us, and it's something that we care about. And so, as you can hear, um, we're conscious, and we want to work with all communities within our faculty and staff, and and all those folks who may feel a certain way. So uh, what we're going to do is probably, and I appreciate the trustees, you know, you, we didn't have anyone to speak to about this issue, but what we're going to do is try and communicate uh, in the future through the chancellor. And I think that might be best um, if we were to come up with a response we're going to maybe, if we need to, probably we might have a question or two we might follow up on, but we're going to probably turn this over to the chancellor to communicate in a way that uh, represents the, the school. And we appreciate your time in, in coming today and what you're going to say. And I hope the trustees uh, made their points and, and uh, so. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Well, I think that might be it. And um, we are um, going to go into closed session right now. Uh, so, uh, pursuant to uh, section 610.021, subsection blah, 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 legal action, cause of uh, action of litigation, confidential privilege, leasing. Purchase of sale of real estate, hiring, hiring discipline, promotion of employees, uh, seal bids, um, and documents, individually identifiable personnel records, and performance rates. We're going to uh, look for a motion and go into the closed session. So, second. second. And then all those in favor? Aye. 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 We need a roll call. Oh, we need a roll call. Uh, roll call, Trustee Martin. Aye. Trustee Osborne? Here. Trustee Reed? Aye. 
Thank you. Trustee Washington. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. But we are in close. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Appreciate all of you.